always amazed at the responses that I receive to my YouTube videos that I do. Many of them are actually very thoughtful and people who want to engage in true dialogue and discussion, but more often than not, the comments that I receive I have to filter because they're people who really just have problems with either the Catholic Church as a whole, priesthood, or, or me uh, personally. And actually, it's probably not me personally, but more so what I represent. And many of the comments that I receive say things like, oh, I'm just a, a bigot, I'm a hate monger, I'm a pedophile. Um, anybody who knows me would say none of that is true, I think. Anybody who's engaged me in dialogue in this particular ministry or in, in person would certainly have to say I'm not a bigot, and I don't think anybody would say, in all honesty, that I'm a pedophile if you actually truly knew me. However, I think what's behind these, especially in regards to my video last week, is a misunderstanding of what Catholicism is and some hurt over some of the things that have been done in the name of Catholicism and perhaps in the name of the Catholic Church. And I want to address some of that in this YouTube video. In particular, what is the role of faith in the public sphere? And how is that seen from a Catholic perspective? Because this seemed to generate a lot of discussion last week. The issue at hand seemed to be, what is the role of somebody of faith in bringing their faith to the public sphere? And many people in America hold to an American secular mentality. That is the dominant religion in America, is American secularism. And according to this mentality, this religion, what it says is that your faith beliefs are your own private matter, and you're free to believe whatever you want, but you are not free to bring those beliefs into the public realm. When it comes to the public realm, they are taboo and forbidden. And this is especially true for people who are Christian and Catholic. And I say that because I think this goes against the grain of the Catholic mindset and creates all sorts of problems and misunderstandings. Many people will get upset when I tell people that as Catholics we're obliged to bring our faith into the public sphere and they say, no, no, that's actually against the law. And they hold the law to be kind of the highest value that we have in our society, the American law. But for a Catholic, there's something even higher, and that's the law of God. Because if what the Catholic Church teaches is true, as Catholics believe, then we're obliged to follow it because it is a divine revelation. And we believe that we have the fullness of truth given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And we've been given a mission. And our mission is to go and to create disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that Christ has commanded us to observe. Now, here's where this rubs up against American culture. American culture is founded on this idea that, no, what the majority wants, democracy rules the day, and currently democracy says, your faith does not belong in the public sphere. And that tends to be the, the mantra of most people today. But for a Catholic, we say, no, we've got this mission from God, <laughs> like the Blues Brothers, we're on a mission from God. And that mission is a divine mission, and so that's going to take priority over any human mission, uh, certainly. And, and hopefully anybody, even if you're not a, a believer, can understand, well, this is at least the mentality, this is what Catholics believe. Um, now you could say, I think they're crazy, they're wrong, or something like that, and that's certainly your prerogative to say that. But do you understand what it is a Catholic believes and why it is we're so insistent on these beliefs? We believe that we're accountable to God. And we'd much rather be in God's good grace and rub against uh, the laws of the American society, the Chinese culture, or any other culture that may have persecuted us in any way, shape, or form, than to say we're in good with these civil uh, authorities and we're going to face judgment from God at the end and have to answer for, <laughs> to him for some of the things that we've done. Now, again, we've been given this mission as Catholics to go and to create disciples and to teach people to observe everything that Christ taught us to, taught us to observe. And the only way we can accomplish that mission is to do it in the public square. Um, you can't create disciples by simply keeping your faith private. You can't teach the world to follow Christ's commands by never mentioning them in public. It's a very public religion by its very nature. In fact, I was thankful for some of the YouTube comments because I used it in my homily this past weekend, and anybody who'd like to hear that can go over to the Working to Beat Hell website and listen to that homily. The homily dealt with a passage from the Acts of the Apostles in which the apostles were put in the public prisons and they were charged. And the charge that was put before them is that they were filling Jerusalem with all these teachings. 
And in a sense, that seems to be the charge that was thrown against me um, on my YouTube videos. You're trying to make your teachings uh, known to everybody and make everybody abide by your teachings. Well, certainly I wouldn't do it by force, and neither did the apostles. But certainly I think people have a right to hear these teachings, and I believe I have an obligation to let the world know the truth that I know and to pass that on to people. And I, I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to do. And certainly... The apostles, when they were faced with that charge, um, they responded. And their response was, we have to obey God rather than man. Meaning we will face whatever civil consequences there are as long as we're obeying God. Because we know at the end of the day, we're accountable to God and not to human beings. And that's what's really going to matter for us. And the passage is quite telling because it ends with St. Luke uh, giving an account saying that the apostles rejoiced that they were able to be persecuted for the sake of the name. In other words, these are people who are saying we're facing persecution and yay, isn't it great that we're facing persecution for Jesus' name? Thanks be to God. Um, and, and really what they're rejoicing at is they took such joy in having the truth and said, you know what? We're rejoicing that even though we've got the truth and even though the world is against us, that we're not giving up on this truth, that we know it to be true and that we've been found worthy to suffer for this truth. And that's really the mentality of somebody who is truly a Catholic, is they're going to say, I've got this truth and it needs to be shared with all the world. In fact, I've been given a mandate to share it with all the world. So I can't stop teaching about Jesus. I can't not bring this into the public sphere. I can't not allow my faith to influence uh, how I vote, to influence my uh, decisions about uh, how I'm going to raise my family. Um, anything in life is going to be bound by that truth that comes from the gospel. What's happened is we see a lot of Catholics and a lot of people in the world say, no, I'm going to compartmentalize my faith and I will privatize it. But see, the minute you do that, you're not practicing Catholicism anymore. You're practicing what I call American secularism. That is to say that the, the primary value is the American outlook. And then you can build your religion on top of that and fit it into the American way of life. But that's not what the Catholic Church teaches, and it's not what Christianity teaches. Christianity says, no, no, your main value in life has to be your faith. And then everything else gets built upon that. And in fact, that's what our nation is actually built upon. When we look at the Declaration of Independence, we see it's based on this idea that we have inalienable rights given to us by our Creator. So there's a faith component right there in the whole American system, which a lot of people seem to overlook uh, to begin with. And the fact that many of our laws and policies, um, not just in terms of uh, uh, the recent things that's come up in legislation, but even ideas of what constitutes good. Uh, the fact that uh, we want this uh, kind of equality amongst men, these egalitarian ideas, come from the Judeo-Christian tradition. They certainly don't come from uh, you know, the pagan gods of the Greeks and the Romans or anything like that. They come directly from that Judeo-Christian tradition. And they, it came because people took seriously that faith and wanted to put it into action. And it's the same thing that Catholics are seeking to do now. Now, certainly, it's rubbing the society the wrong way at this point in time, and it's not in vogue. Now, somebody who's truly Catholic has to be willing to say, hey, I'm going to fight this, and even if I lose it in the civil courts, I still am obligated to live by my faith and not by the laws of man, even if that means I'm going to face persecution, jail time, and even martyrdom. And I think this is going to be a real test for Catholics in the future, not just in the United States. I, I don't see us getting quite to the point of martyrdom, at least not yet, but certainly we see it in other nations. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if in 200 years from now, we start to see it in this country as well, this intolerance to Catholicism and intolerance to Christianity and religious beliefs in general. But that does not mean that somebody who knows the truth can therefore ignore the truth and pretend it isn't the truth just to appease people. In fact, they have the obligation to live by the truth even if they face persecution. It's the model that was given to us by the apostles. It's the model that was given to us by Christ himself. And so anybody who is a follower of Christ knows that we're going to have to take up our cross daily. And we know that we're going to have to fight an uphill battle. But that doesn't mean that we should just relent and say, well, society is against us, this is an uphill battle, maybe we should do something different because our values don't match with societies. No, 
we still have to be faithful to that mission that we were given, to go and to create disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that Christ had commanded us.